folks, I'm Chuck Sheely with Making Music Magazine, and I'm here today to show you how to restring your guitar properly. Okay, folks, here we are. I'm going to change the strings on my guitar. It's an old friend of mine. I've had this, uh, gee whiz, I've had this a long time. I've probably been through uh, more places with this guitar than I've been with anybody. It's probably my billionth time I'm going to change the strings on it, and I'm going to show you how to do that so that uh, they lock in well, efficiently, without overdoing it, overwinding it, putting too much stress, distributing the stress across the fretboard in the right way so that it stays in tune longer. This guitar is, happens to be set up very well. I uh, put it in the guitar case in California, drove across the country to New York, got here. Two weeks later, I opened it up and it was still in tune. Great so. tuned guitar, it's a Takamini Santa Fe, and uh, it's been one of my workhorses. Here we go. A couple things you need to know. Uh, I generally like to have a few products to facilitate cleaning the guitar while I'm restringing it. So you can simply just put new strings on, or you can take the whole, th the whole thing down and give it a bath, basically, and just uh, clean it up. I like to do that in the fretboards because uh, sometimes there's they get a little gunky if you're playing a lot. You I don't know about you, but I sweat all over my thing at gigs. So uh, anyway, I've got a few things. I've got some uh, guitar polish, string cleaner. Basically, if your strings are not necessarily ready to change and you want to get another play or two out of them, you can just put it on there and wipe that on there. And uh, it uh, takes off dirt and uh, helps uh, rust or whatever, not a whole lot. If, it, if you hit rust, you got to change them. So anyway, uh, otherwise, uh, this wood, this is good for the wood and the, the fretboard keeps it uh, moisturized, if you will. Guitars like to be humid. They like to be in uh, slightly humid situations, not perfectly dry. Another thing I use uh, when I'm going to change the strings is I have a couple of chamois. I have one for the neck because that has a different kind of dirt and then one for the body when I go to polish the body and get it pretty nothing like a pretty beautiful guitar and so uh, I like to polish them up sweetly oh wait maybe that one's the neck they're both getting kind of old yeah this one's the neck you can see because it's got it's dirtier so anyway that's that plus I use a string winder I love this baby. This is kind of like a little tool. It's got the string winder, so I can wind the strings. It's got a little string clipper here, which uh, I love. Uh, you can't overdo it. It's just right. And plus, in the case of this guitar, which has this kind of bridge and saddle on it, uh, I pull the strings out through the bottom, and sometimes they uh, squeeze in pretty tight, and you can't pull them out with your fingertips. So this can get in there and yank on that thing and get that out. So close it back up. It's a great string winder. It's very stable by the way. Um, yeah, Planet Waves. Cool. And away we go. Okay, one of the first things uh, you need to do when you're going to change strings is remove the old strings. I always start with the low E string. Now sometimes Use my string winder, wind it down. You can see on the prior stringing I clipped them all off nice. They stay out of the way, they make less noise and you don't poke anybody's eye out. I take that out like that. With my cool little uh, guitar tool thingy here I can snip that off so that I don't pull this raggedy piece of uh, guitar string through the hole on the bridge. Just pull it out nice. Generally wrap up the string kind of nice and neat. Once again they fling around and if you're not careful you could hurt your eye with it if you so you have to pay attention and uh, just kind of do good habits. Okay, so now 
I don't have the string on the E string. I could take the whole thing down, which I will do for part of this demonstration, but for now, if you just want to change one string at a time, sometimes I do that. And I do that for the purpose of keeping the tension on the fretboard. That way, when I bring it back in, I just find that I typically get to tuning a little bit fast. I'm going to put a little bit of this lemon oil onto my fretboard because it just keeps it healthy, keeps it clean. It's nice and noisy. I let it sit there for a minute. Keep it fresh. I put the cap back on. I grab my chamois. Here's the one for the fretboard. Just take the juice off of it, let it sit there. Yeah, kind of like you rub it in like you would some suntan oil. Gee whiz, you can see already that it's fretboard's a little dry. Keep the bridge healthy, I do the same thing. Just rub it on chapstick or something. Loves it. Keeps the wood pretty, keeps the wood strong. Then you gotta figure out where you put your strings. Go get them. I like to use phosphor bronze strings for this guitar. I use a variety of strings for different guitars or different sounds in different situations. They last, they ring nicely. It's really, really what it comes down to is if, if, they're, if they sound good and you're having fun. And at all times that's usually the basic barometer. I like these uh, on this guitar, I like to have them wound from uh, 12s as my lightest string to 53 is my heaviest string. So then what we do is we take the end of the string here, the string with no ball at the end, this has a ball at the end, steel strings, like I said this is a 0 .053 gauge string, phosphor bronze, I'm going to seat it right into the bridge, bring it through, over the saddle, once you get it through the bottom, then you bring it up here. Then you bring it up here to the headstock. Now, once you get it in there, you can see that there's some extra slack. How much slack do you do? My rule of thumb is to use the thumb. Just put your hand about like so. See? right here. That's pretty good. That'll put enough wind on it. I get it started this way. I make the first wind, the loose end, go under the string as you wind. I make the second one Go over, thereby creating a knot. Then once you get it into that spot, I obviously tuned it up. It's convenient when the other strings are on. Clip the end. That string's done. Then we just proceed to the next string. Take that one down. Once again, just clip 
the squiggly end off. Nasty. Pull it out nice. Wind it up as it has been. This would be an A string. While that string is off, we will once again go to the neck. It's easier to clean these areas near the bridge when you have the strings off, otherwise you'll have trouble getting your hand under there without having to loosen the strings. Okay, next up our A string. Our A string will saddle here over the bridge through the woods into myself on the string. Shucks. Therefore it's good to have some Kleenex nearby. Let it bleed out, you'll be alright. Okay, so now we're going to the fourth string, the D string. Here's a case where it's good to have one of these tools because right now this doesn't want to come out. It's in there a little tight. But if you see that little guy there is perfect for going in and getting it. That'll save you a lot of time. Now we're going to grab the D string. The fourth string. Then we go we take that string down too. Here we are on the G string. We will forego all jokes about the G string. It is the third string. I always find, have to find a good comfortable sitting position to do this. I like to clean things up as I go. Doing it this way, you can see how it lends for uh, quicker tuning. It helps me in my mind kind of have a little checklist for all the things I want to do from cleaning it, seeing to it that each one goes in exactly the way I want it to so I know how it feels when I get out there to play on the stage or with my pals in the living room or in here in the studio. There you go, now it's all set and it's close to be tuned but needs to be stretched as well. The strings need to be stretched. So we're going to put away this, this uh, lemon oil and we're going to come over here and grab the polish and then I'm going to get a different chamois. I'm going to get the body chamois. This basically just a spray. I put it on the body because get hand oils and sweat and you know dirt and things like that just cleans it off nicely in a gentle way that doesn't uh, doesn't violate the polish that's on it so much we leave that to me when I bang it up at the gig if I always get a nice little circular motion with these chamois it looks pretty very mirror like the wood shines up beautifully 
and you know that's part of the fun of the guitar is its beauty and the kinds of woods they choose not only do the woods look beautiful but they offer different tonalities this one is like a spruce it's a little bit mellower sound than a spruce which is intended to help the fact that it, the style of the guitar is called a jumbo and I love it so uh, it's a very bright sounding guitar on its own but they do things to warm it up basically so that's why you see this nice ebony fretboard ebony choices those are generally offer a warmer tone when you see bass players use maple they're usually going to play a slap or a brighter tone and the, uh, all I can see in there anymore is the damage I've done to it like I said we've been through a lot this guitar and myself and we'll continue to clean over here little squirt when I get near the electronics I will spray the rag spray the chamois and then wipe around the electronics so notice that I always kind of keep things on a soft surface here's a piano bench that's padded I use that it comes in handy it's right here my floor is carpeted I don't mind setting it on there. And I'm changing the strings like you saw me do. I don't want to set it on hard surfaces. I just kind of dust that off. I don't get any uh, polish on there necessarily. I always sit in this part of the room because it reveals dust that I otherwise do not see. Pretty right. This backing also con contributes to the mellowness of the guitar. And I've always admired it every time I have to take care of this. Beautiful. I think it's also a good way of, you know, not to be goofy or anything, but this is a great way to bond with your instrument. I know everything about this, and when I hold it, uh, we become one, and uh, if you're doing it right, you feel the same. You feel one with it, like the uh, same way when you're with a horse, you have to move in the same way, you have to move in a certain synchronicity. And so while it's not exactly a horse it'll still take you for a ride and so in this way I like to bond with it I like to keep it nice and clean so now the guitar is restrung and I cleaned it up a little bit so now what we're gonna do is my guitar happens to have an onboard tuning machine my electronics and I'm going to tune it and I'm also going to stretch the strings so I'm going to find my chamois my chamois with the, uh, that I was using for the strings first thing I'm going to do is stretch the strings I stretch them gently just enough to feel them stretch you can feel them stretch I sort of follow with my thumb on this so that I don't keep putting the pressure on there and sort of uh, saw it. If you, if you do that, you'll saw it. But this way, it keeps that connection down there and it's less likely to break later. Just from my experience. Slightly lift as I stretch out every part of the string. And you can feel it let go, just like when you're stretching out yourself. I know that when I play that, I had it at the E earlier, it should be well down. Right about there. 
that'll continue to stretch so we'll come back to it later so what we do here is we move on to the A string once again you're getting familiar with your instrument you're getting intimate so don't look at it as a chore it's taking up time look at it as a privilege to develop intimacy with your instrument I think it leads to how natural you naturally you perform later Stretch them good. <laughs> then you're good to go. So thanks for watching. And uh, I hope you got something out of this how to change your strings lesson and that it was uh, fun for you and helpful and uh, keeps you playing and staying well in tune. And remember to sign up for our email list. Come back next week to find more tips from Making Music Magazine. Have a great day.